Siri P. Chidambram, sir, 10 minutes. Thank you, sir, more than enough. So after listening to the learned professor of Lucknow University, I'm sure that all of us are convinced that Amrit Kal has begun. And by the, going the number of times he was applauded by the treasury benches, I think he should be in line for a ministership now. I wish him well. If all is well in the world, and God is in his heaven, and India is growing at the fastest rate in the world, why, are, why is the impact of that growth not felt on the ground? This is the question which my friend Derek asked, and I try to supplement that in the few minutes I have. We are a large economy. We are growing at the fastest rate in the world. We are innovative. We have the largest FDI coming into the country. But why is it not seen on the ground? And I specifically want to ask, why is it not seen in the inflation numbers and the unemployment numbers? Yes. Let's take only those two. Now, what are the unemployment numbers? And I'm going by official numbers. <clears throat> the government doesn't like the CMIE numbers, so we'll avoid the CMIE numbers. Mercifully, the BJP no longer talks about two crore jobs being created every year. Thank you for small mercies that you are not making these tall claims. That's one of the election jumlas. I didn't know the word jumla unless I heard it first from the Honorable Home Minister. Now let's focus on a few numbers. This is official numbers of the periodic labor survey. The worker population rate in this country is 46%, which means the number of workers to the population is 46. It's quite low, but let's take it as acceptable given the various circumstances of the country. Of the worker population, that is 46% of the total population, male worker population is 69%, but the female is only 22%. Of the worker population, less than 50% actually work. So if you apply 50% on 46%, effectively it means only that 23% of the people work. This has more or less been constant in the last nine and a half years of the BJP government. Now why, I ask, if we have such scintillating growth, why is this numbers not improving? Now, my learned friend, Derek O'Brien, gave the numbers. In the age group 15 to 24, the unemployment rate is 23.22. Among graduates under the age of 25, the unemployment rate is 42%. Graduates between the year 25 to 29, it is still 23%. Graduates between the years of 30 to 34, it is close to 10%. It's 9.8%. A graduate in this country, and I spoke at a college, I said, I'm not frightening you, but you will gradu graduate here. 
But unfortunately, one out of four will be unemployed. And even until the age of 35, one out of 10 will be unemployed. Why is this spirited growth, scintillating growth, not turning into jobs? That's the first question I have. And keep in mind, most employment in this country is self-employment, 57%. Regular wage employees has declined from 24% to 21%. Apart from the quantity, the quality of employment is also poor. So I want the government to answer, why is this 10-year splendid period not reflecting in employment figures? The second one is about price rise. And on price rise, yes, inflation has come down in the last couple of months. I'm not disputing that. But please remember that in the even today, the CPI inflation is above the tolerance limit of 4 to 6 percent of the <coughs> RBI. Food and light inflation is 4.3. Fuel and light inflation is 4.3. Food inflation is 9.2. What does the combination of high unemployment and high prices, what does it mean? It means that, and I think Derek hinted at that, it means that there is a cut, the impact will be felt in the cut in domestic consumption, cut in household consumption. The impact is you borrow more. Credit growth is driven in this country, according to the RBI, on personal loans and gold loans. The net financial assets of households has plummeted to the lowest level, 5.1%. What does this mean? It means that people are consuming less, people are borrowing more, they are liquidating their household assets and savings, and the net financial savings has come down to a historical low, a 50-year low of 5.1%. It also shows up elsewhere. It shows up, for example, in matters like child malnutrition. I'll just give you the numbers of child malnutrition, and I have shocking numbers. They are shocking numbers of child malnutrition. Today, among children, you will find that Sixteen point point three percent of children are undernourished, nineteen point three percent of children are wasted, thirty-five point five percent of children are stunted. It shows up again in the food that the children get. And add to that Derek's numbers, under the age of five, so many people die because of hunger. Why is it not showing up in consumption? It also shows up in education. They are mental growth. Today, in a class eight, only 70% of the children can read a class two text. And only 45% of children can do basic arithmetic. In class eight, you can't do basic arithmetic, you can't do, you can't read a class two text. So ultimately, the question is, who is this government for? Is it for the poor, or is its policy so skewed that it is favor of the rich? The numbers are undisputed. I have not seen a single government spokesman dispute these numbers. 23 crore people of India are poor when the poverty bar is very low. Poverty bar is 1,286 rupees per month per person in urban areas 
and 1,089 rupees per month per person in rural areas. With such a low poverty bar, bar such a low poverty bar, 23 crore people are poor. And it shows up in inequality. The bottom 50% owns 3% of national wealth and gets 13% gets 13% of the uh, national income. And the top 5% own 60% of national wealth, and top 1% holds 22% of the national income. So ultimately, this growth is unacceptable. This kind of growth is unacceptable. We need more balanced growth, but then I end with the final question that I've been asking the government for many, many months, for which I have not got an answer. I hope I will get an answer today. In 91-92, India's GDP was 25 lakh crore. In 12 years, in 2003-04, it doubled to 50 lakh crore, doubled. In 10 years, under UPA, it doubled to 100 lakh crore. 25 to 50 to 100. I ask one simple question. If you are growing at such a fast rate, such a uh, record-breaking rate, will you 100 lakh crore? The finance minister, honorable finance minister, knows the answer. I know the answer. You know the answer. But I want the honorable finance minister, I no. want the honorable finance minister to no. say the answer the is economy. The answer is known to the finance minister, the former finance minister, I'm out of it. <laughs> whether, whether the GDP will double in their Amritkal period under the NDA government, will it grow to 200 lakh crore by March 2024? And I want the Honorable Finance Minister to answer that question. Thank you, sir. Dr.